Welcome to the Chef's Kitchen. I'm your host, Maria Valletta, and we're here with our sponsor, St. Luke's University Health Network, and Chief Urologist, Eric Meyer. Nice to meet you, yeah, good doctor. Good to meet you as well, Maria. Thank Great. you for having me. And Lee Chismar from Boli, right here in Bethlehem. Good to see you again. Good to see you It's too, wonderful Maria. to have you on our show, and you're going to make something healthy and delicious for us today, right? Yes, yes. What are you making? So we're actually going to do a steamed uh, black bass. We're going to do a little bit of a dashi broth, a lot of great local mushrooms, uh, local vegetables, tofu. It's a really nice simple dish with a lot of flavor. It's something that's easy to do and it's, it's something that I eat as much as I can. You know, I'll make dashi broth at the restaurant with leftover uh, fish bones and I actually drink it for breakfast in the morning. Wow, so, super healthy. Yeah, very, You're very in the healthy. macrobiotic diet. <laughs> <laughs> great, you ready to get dirty? Let's go to work. Yeah. yeah. All right, so the first thing that we're gonna do, I just wanna show everyone how to do the dashi broth because it is so quick. Um, and so what I have over here is I have some uh, black bass tails, the bones from them, um, and then I just have some fillets there. So this is kind of a one pot wonder, it's very quick. What I'm actually gonna do is just go ahead and drop these guys in here. Wow, um, so where do you, where do you, you just fillet this, but you save the bones, yes. right? Yes, yep, and, yeah, and you can have the heads, um, you know, in the Culinary Institute of America, they teach you that the heads can be a little too oily and somewhat stronger. Uh, there are a lot of uh, grandmothers out there that think that that's blasphemy. They want the fish heads in the soup. So um, that's kind of personal preference. What do you think, Doc? I say go for it. Yeah, <laughs> use it all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I have, some, no waste food. I have some that I made yesterday <laughs> that actually do have the fish heads. So even at the end, we can kind of taste the difference. Great. So now we pretty much have some mirepoix here. We have some celery. Um, and that's, you know, that was probably about two stalks worth. I have my onions, that's two onions. Um, some carrots here uh, from Tebrovich Farms. We're gonna throw those in. That was three smaller carrots that's or sweet. one large one. Uh, and then I have one half a bulb of fennel that we julienned. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get those in. So um, mirepoix with fennel. Yeah. Uh, now, olite, meaning mushroom, I can't really do a dish where we don't add some mushrooms. Um, Doc, so I'm going to go ahead. Have you been to um, Bolit? Love it very yeah. much. Yes, yeah. My wife and I, we probably go every four to six weeks. A great place for friends and a nice evening out. More importantly, uh, what I enjoy about it is, uh, aside from Chef's beautiful work, uh, the ingredients themselves are locally sourced. Uh, Lehigh Valley is rich in multiple farms. Yes. Uh, and in this my business as well. This is such like an, a, a, an epic area for. Right culinary everything really yeah, right that's now. Right. Yeah, yeah, so we enjoy it very much. Um, so to this I went ahead and added two cloves of garlic uh, and now we're just going to put a little cold water in there. Um, and then the last two ingredients that we have are some bonito flakes which is just a smaller fish that they cure and dry uh, and then they slice that super thin and I have some kombu or kelp um, and so we'll add these towards the end um, but this is the the bonito actually gives it kind of a smoky flavor. Okay. And for those of you, you know, pescatarians, I think this is a really nice way to almost get that bacon flavor. I was going to say it's like it's like the seafood bacon, like the yes. fish bacon. Yes. Yeah, yeah, it's great. And I feel like um, these are actually easier to find than most people think because yep. if you go into your Asian section of the grocery store, yep. right. you can find them. Right. Yeah. And these are all, you know, extremely healthy for you too. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this on. And we're we always cook really great food on the Chef's Kitchen, but especially doing the healthy food today because we're showcasing um, a healthy lifestyle and right. healthy diet. Because being chief of urology, I feel like that's really important, right? Right. For, for you to kind of talk to your clients and, and your um, patients and keep them uh, like preventive care, that's right. huge right now, right. right? And Yeah, and I would say, you know, the basics are really there for everyone to do. And that is to say that if you, you know, sort of subscribe to the theory that cancer, cardiovascular disease and so forth is due to uh, chronic inflammation and insult, if you will, to your body, uh, by lessening that inflammation with healthy diet, healthy exercise, cardiovascular exercise, you're maintaining a strong immune system, therefore you're able to better ward off disease and, you know, do basically what's cheap and easy in terms of preventative medicine. And that's good to know, and I think that people need to know that because right. there's a way for, for you to take responsibility, right? That's right, and enjoy it. I mean, it, you know, it's not to say you can't have a great meal, yeah. you know, a well-balanced meal, a delicious-tasting meal. 
and still at the same time do something that's good for your So for your are body. you chief of uh, urology and oversee the surgery department there as well? Is uh, that just the main? urology department itself. Okay. Yeah, yeah, and we're you know covering basically six campuses at this point as St. Luke's continues uh, to expand. Um, so we comprise currently six urologists, uh, basically expanding all the time. And the goal of that really is to outreach into the community itself provide our services really high level care uh, throughout eastern Pennsylvania. Wow, and, and uh, St. Luke's, I heard, mm. uh, got an award from U.S. News and World Report? That's right, yeah. And again, that goes really to the long-standing, you know, history that our department has in terms of really being at the forefront. We'll be back with more from St. Luke's University Health Network. We're back with Chef Lee Chismar. How's it going, Chef? It's going great. All right, so now this is our dashi broth. It's ready. We're going to bring that to a simmer, uh, and then we're going to go ahead and add this stuff. So let's go ahead and move over here. Okay. Um, is there anything we can help you with? Put us oh, to work. Yes. We're oh, here. yes. So Good. the first thing I'm going to do, I have some cold dashi broth here, uh, and this is the stuff that we made yesterday. I'm going to go ahead and add it to here. So the that's basically what we're creating over there. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Um, and so now what we're going to do is uh, we're going to cut some of our root vegetables up. Um, and so if you guys want to come in, sure. basically, I'm just going to take the ends off the carrots. Sometimes you can leave them on if you're at home. A mm. lot of times there can be a little bit of dirt in there, uh, but they're coming from an organic farm, so sometimes that's, right. you know, yeah. added benefit. <laughs> these are really pretty. Um, so I think yeah. really what we're going to do is we're just going to end up splitting these guys right down the middle. So did you peel okay. these? Yep, these have okay. already been peeled. All right. So if you want to go ahead and start cutting those, I'm all going to right, grab. I'm going to let you do that. Yeah, I'll go to work. I'm going to grab the cold. I'm missing my robot, but that's all right. <laughs> Your yeah. robot. Tell me yeah. about that. <laughs> well, uh, we were the first institution in Pennsylvania to do robotic surgery at, actually back in 2001. Like the famous Da Vinci. That's right. Really? Yeah, and that's an apparatus uh, which basically allows us to avoid uh, the need for open surgery, um, especially for prostate cancer treatment. What that does is it uh, yields better outcomes in terms of things like cancer control and continence rates and so forth, but also makes the recovery much easier for patients as well. So that's the wave of the future, you see? Uh, it is, and I would say at this point, you know, nationally we're seeing this more or less uh, being the standard of care. Um, so it's really evolved. We're glad at St. Luke's to have been on the forefront of that I was because just at the say, time it really didn't exist. Yeah, yeah. So it's nice to see something that you know you, you sort of helped, if you will, co-develop become commonplace and really standard of care throughout the country. So you're doing the back slice knife. Yes. The back, you showed me how to do this before and I really love it and I use it in my kitchen all the time. Oh, it's awesome. such a great tip. It really is. And Go I think ahead and tell us again how you do that. So, you, you know, really the key is to have a very sharp have knife. Have you seen this, Dr. Bear? Um, no. And Look. what I'm doing, you know, typically you're cutting this way, right. which no matter how sharp your knife is, a lot of times you're going to end up tearing some of the cells in the in the vegetables so we use a back slice where we're actually drawing the knife backwards and that allows the knife to do the slicing Isn't that great? Um, Beautiful. which gets yeah. you a cleaner cut um, and less cellular damage and, yes and so you're going to be able to you know we typically use when when we're doing single dishes we'll use almost a clove of garlic in, in a dish to order but mm. we slice it to order mm. And it's something that it allows you to get a really nice garlic flavor without overpowering right. the dish. Right, right. And it doesn't sit and macerate too long. So right. I'm doing that with my garlic now, and I do it with shallots too. Which yes, is really yes. Great. Yeah. Okay, so I think we're probably good on the carrots. Um, and so I have now turned this on. Good um, job. <laughs> it's, yeah, that's perfect. I'm um, like quizzing him on on everything about my St. Fingers Luke's are University. Still here. Yeah. <laughs> still here. Got our little carrot, so you can just add this guy as is. All right. Perfect. Oops. So, one of the things here, we have the liquid that we put in is cold, um, and then what that's going to kind of do for us um, is with the root vegetables that take a little bit longer to cook. Um, it's nice because it brings it up in there, and you'll get a much even uh, cooking process for your root vegetables. So, even at the restaurant, any root vegetable we do, we always start it in cold salted water and then bring it up from there. Okay. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and give you some shiitake mushrooms um, to cut. Uh, and these are from Uli Valley, which is a local mushroom farm. And I think basically if you just come here and cut them into quarter inch strips, um, and we probably won't need, you know, some of these are, are pretty right. large. We probably Look just need about four or five. Look how big this one is. I really yeah. never see yeah. a shiitake mushroom. Yeah, this large, really it almost looks like a portabella. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. pretty it's incredible. It's crazy. Yeah, pretty neat. Yeah, we get some royal trumpet mushrooms from yeah. them that literally you could do 
you know, a vegetarian steak, the mushrooms are almost this big, yeah, and just slice them and, and pan sear them, they come yeah. out really nice. What's your favorite thing to have at home? Oh wow, you know, this time of year, um, you know, uh, one of the sort of meals we love, um, very healthy also, but also pretty filling, is uh, lentils. Oh, uh, what I we love call lentils. lentils. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we make this, you know, usually with a, a bit of a mixture of uh, celery, uh, onion, a little bit of garlic and salt. And uh, we may add a little bit of bacon just to add a little bit of smoky flavor to it. We make a double smoked bacon, which brings that out. Wow. Uh, it's an excellent meal, especially even yep. also uh, reheated. So it freezes well, you know. Those are yours. Well. Are you putting me to work? Yep. Oh, you are tough. <laughs> yeah, but uh, <laughs> in any case, yeah, for this time of year, especially when it's so cold out, uh, it's a beautiful meal, very filling. We'll return with more from the Chef's Kitchen with St. Luke's University Health Network. We now return to the Chef's Kitchen with St. Luke's University Health Network. What are you chopping over here, um, Chef? So I have, this is a, a larger Hakurai turnip. Uh, this comes to us from Salvaterra Gardens. Um, and one is it of the different things, than a regular turnip? It's a little bit more mild, um, but still very earthy. Mm, and it it's really, got a sweetness to it, yeah, though. And that's, that's mm. one of the things. This dish is a really nice earthy dish, you know, with the mushrooms. We're actually going to add some snails to it. Um, so mm. this kind of rounds out Escargo. that whole flavor. Oh, absolutely. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and drop these guys right in here. Um, yeah, very good. And if you want to go ahead, we can add some mushrooms to it. How much do you Jeff, you tell us. Uh, Probably about, let's go a quarter of that right now. Okay. All right. Yeah, we'll just do maybe another yeah. handful. Perfect. Look? Yeah. Yep, looks good. I feel like we're just layering a lot of flavors yeah. here. Yeah, yeah. Which is really nice too because when we get all the vegetables in there, we're going to have all that flavor come through. And then it makes a really nice bed to steam your fish on. So you can right. just drop the fish right, right on the top, on. and it's a little bit out of the liquid, and it should steam up really nicely. Mm. And a very healthy way to cook your fish. Yes. And so far, we haven't added you know, any fat to this, any butter. Um, sometimes I'll drizzle a little olive oil in there at the end, um, but super healthy. Right. right. Excellent. Great. So, Dr. Mayer, can you give us some tips on preventive care for the, like what you mm. tell your, um, your clients at, at that come in your patients that come right. into the to the center, the urology center, and right. you tell them, you know, what checkups every year or how's it go? Yeah, yeah. And for men, generally speaking, beyond the age of fifty, we do recommend a yearly checkup. In respect to you know health maintenance, you know, kind of like we touched before, you know, I always stress, you know, good cardiovascular exercise, healthy, balanced diet. You know, again, mixing fresh fruit, fresh vegetables you know, meats as well, and being selective in terms of the types of things, you know, you're adding to your diet and mix it up as well. And moderation. Moderation right? is key, yeah. Yes. Again. Right now we're, we're starting to come up, we have a nice simmer mm. going. Um, and that so really basically what I'm gonna do, I have some Cipollini onions, uh, which are really nice, a little bit mi more mild than your traditional onion, and they have a really nice sweetness to them. Can you um, give us a tip for getting the skins off them? So. For my I, own personal. I, I can. <laughs> um, one of the right. things. I always usually, I'll take a paring knife, cut the bottom off, and peel them from there. Okay. Another way to do it is actually to pour super hot water over top of them just for five, six minutes. And then from there, that softens the skins up and they kind of wipe off a little bit easier. Um, so I have some radish here. We're just gonna toss this in at the end, uh, but I wanna go ahead and get them sliced. And I think basically the last thing that we really have to cut up here is our jalapenos. Um, okay. This is really nice. You know, depending on your spice level at home. I like spice. I know you do. <laughs> um, but I did already de-seed these, but we're going to go ahead and kind of mix those in right at the end. So I'm just going to julienne them. And then I do have a little togarashi, which is a Japanese uh, spice blend that's dried Japanese chilies. There's seaweed, ginger, and some garlic in it. Something else that I love to add, it's always, mm. this year seems to be one of my favorite ingredients, and I think it was last year and the year before too, <laughs> is um, some Tuscan kale. Uh, nice. Just that earthiness is, is just so wonderful. It really rounds this out. What I'm going to do is I just have some shrimp here. I'm just going to have these guys. So if you want, we can probably actually add that to the dashi broth over there now. Um, what, this? Yep. Okay. You can go ahead and dump those right in. And then we'll get our bonito flakes. And then that's basically... Are we adding it to this one, right? Yes, okay. yeah. Um, so just in? Yep, go All ahead. Right. And you know, kind of just... They just dissolve as you, not necessarily dissolve, but they soften up and they'll just kind of fold in as they, as they cook there. I don't have a lot of um, experience cooking with kelp or kombu. How about you? No, not at all. <laughs> yeah. How many do you want in here? Uh, probably about two more. Okay. All right. Um, then I'm just going to go ahead. 
I'm sprinkling in our uh, Burgin, Bur uh, Burgundian snails. Mm. Uh, this is a product they forage wild in Burgundy. Um, and then, I mean, you can just smell the earthiness there. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> I feel like the snails. <laughs> it's, oh, yeah. it's kind of like that. It's like, it's like potting soil and wet leaves yes. all yeah, put together. Now, you know? All the good smells from it a smells forest. Like yeah, I mean, it's really, <laughs> it's really nice. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and drop these guys right in the top here. And we want to make sure we don't have a, a volcano here. Um, so we're just going to lay them right in. And, you know, you can see how easy this dish, uh, you know, 20 minutes. Um, so that fish is probably going to take about uh, two to three minutes right now. And we're going to be ready to go. We're going to probably adjust the seasoning. I like to add a little lemon juice to it. Um, and then we'll be able to serve. Dr. Mayer, why don't you tell me a little bit more about the robotics? Right. and the Da Vinci robot. You know, we were talking about uh, basically, you know, the root of surgery, if you will, especially in the use of uh, cancer surgery is to, you know, do what's right oncologically speaking, meaning removing the cancer, mm -hmm. uh, but trying to minimize the amount of trauma that we cause in that process. And that gets into, you know, reducing side effects of surgery, shortening patient's recovery, lessening pain, improving quality of life. And that's really where the robotics comes in, primarily because we're uh, doing procedures now with minimal incisions, you know, things that are maybe a centimeter or so in size. Doing the procedure internally, um, remotely with a three-dimensional camera, specialized instruments that allow me to work, you know, some 20, 30 feet away from the patient. Wow. Um, but with that enhanced visibility and mobility, you can do things that you can't even do with your hands, uh, especially down low when we're working the pelvis. So the technology has really been a game changer in a lot of ways, um, both for the treatment of prostate cancer, you know, kidney cancers and other things where we have to do some very delicate reconstruction. Um, and I'm glad to say that, you know, as a St. Luke's partner, you know, since 2001, essentially, we've gotten this off the ground. Um, we've been there sort of with the evolution of this technology. And it's like anything else that you do enough of, you know, you get really facile at it, much like Chef. Yeah. Um, you can begin to, you know, sort of add to the repertoire, if you will, and, and, you know, begin expanding on that. So it's been a real benefit to patients primarily, which is the main reason I got interested to begin with, um, was really just seeing, you know, what it can do in terms of outcomes and, and patients' quality of life. That's great. Stay tuned for more from Chef Lee Chismar. now return to the Chef's Kitchen of the St. Luke's University Health Network. Probably the fish is almost done. All right, so we're pretty much ready to go. Mm, um, I smell we, that smokiness. Oh yeah, it's, it smells really nice. Uh, so if we could, if you would grab me a plate for the fish. Got it. We're going to go ahead and plate it up. Use this, yep. and I see you've already got a beautiful plate set up. This yep. is where the broth is going to go? Yes, so we went ahead and just added a little tofu, some baby bok choy from Liberty Gardens, mm. and a little local radish to that. Uh, and it's That's nice to have um, some contrast in, in textures and colors. Mm. And so that's why we have uh, the cold tofu and the bok choy, I think, will wilt, wilt down as we, um, as we add our hot yes. liquid to mm. it. All right, so there's our fish here. So let's go right over to our bowl. Um, and you know, there's just, there's just something about these one pots, uh, you know, cooking mm. that just Makes life easier. Uh, it makes life easier, <laughs> yeah. but Less you know, but there's something that kind of tugs at your heart, um, and you can just see, yeah, you know, yeah. how beautiful everything looks. Uh, and then I just want to make sure that I'm getting, you know, a little bit of snails or a lot of snails, some shrimp, uh, and then I'm just going to go ahead and top That's the broth off beautiful. here. And it smells amazing. Yeah. Are you serving this dish at Belit right now? Um, it will probably be on the menu tonight, which nice. is <laughs> which is really. Um, so I'm going to come right here and go ahead, and, um, and we're going to add our fish. Perfect. Yeah. And then one last thing that I like to do, um, just to kind of add a little spice to it. Um, wow. Is I'm going to go ahead and take. A little bit of micro baby bok choy, um, and we're just going to sprinkle that right over the top. Come mm. in here, oh, yeah. doc. This is and good I may stuff. make off with the whole thing. <laughs> you better watch it. Just a little <laughs> extra kick. I'll add just a little of yeah. the tobarashi over the top. Oh, and it adds such a beautiful pop yeah. of color. Yeah. And, it's, and it, it gives you a little pop in flavor, too. Okay. All right, so we, we're going to need to taste this, and I can't wait. So I'm going to pass out spoons. All right. Uh -huh. Come on in. Oh, yeah. Okay, go on. No, Don't be shy. Absolutely. 
And all right, so there's three pieces of fish here, so we get to each have our own little bite, which is fabulous. Go ahead, <laughs> dig in. Right. This is the best part. Thank you. All that hard work that, that we did. Mmm. <laughs> mmm. 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 I'm gonna jump right in for a smell. Delicious. So good. Yeah, yeah. Mm. This is perfect. You know what it is? Comforting. Mmm. Mmm. Very flavorful. Just what I need yeah. this time just of year. Just a spectrum. Yeah. Mm. yeah, yeah. Yeah, it makes you forget it's winter. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and it's just so healthy yeah. and so fresh, and you taste all the flavors. Yeah. Everything. And that's, you know, one of the importance of having, you know, great ingredients mm -hmm. is you don't have to do much. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you that's know? right. You just let them do speak for themselves. Oh, gosh, that broth is incredible, mm -hmm. Chef. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for creating the perfect dish for the chef's kitchen. Dr. Meyer, thank you for being no, on the show and telling me. us about Real healthy pleasure. lifestyles. It was so great to have St. Luke's University Health Network be a sponsor. Thank you so much. Lee, thanks for being here and making an incredible dish. Love having you on the yeah, Chef's Kitchen. It really was a treat. Thank you again. Thank you, Chef. Thank you very much. St. Luke's University Health Network is the oldest health care provider in the Lehigh Valley. With six hospitals and over 200 outpatient facilities and a fleet of medical vans, St. Luke's can serve all your family's needs. And as the area's largest provider of medical education through our Temple University affiliated medical school and nation's oldest operating school of nursing, we're training medical professionals to care for your family's future needs. My Health, My Hospital, St. Luke's. Cook something from the show? Went to a restaurant that you loved? Become a fan of The Chef's Kitchen on Facebook and share your thoughts. It was really great to be here today on Chef's Kitchen with St. Luke's cooking healthier food. I think one of the things that's really great about being a chef is you're always evolving to meet the needs of your customers. And right now, health is a big part of it. So to be able to do techniques that taste great without all the fat and the extra calories is something that's I feel invaluable these days. And so it was really great to be able to do that here.